In today's video, we will reveal how Mark completely fooled Pan and Teller with an amazing magic trick involving fire. Let's do a quick rewind of what happened in the performance. Mark started off the performance by claiming the letter X was a very special letter of the alphabet. He then invited Allison on stage and asked her to give him a hand. Prepare to experience the power of the X. <laughs> okay. Feel the power. He picked up a matchbox and struck it with the matchstick to light the candle. And what's a magical science experiment without a little fire? He then placed his hand over the flame and said that it hurts, but when he drew an X on his palm he said that he had now magical powers. Upon placing his palm over the flame, he was not hurt at all. I feel no pain. I feel like I should stop you. He then told Allison it was her turn to test her powers, but before she does, Mark has to give Allison the power of the X, and upon shaking her hands with Mark, the X had vanished from Mark's hand and appeared inside Allison's hand out of nowhere. If we take a look, the X has left my hand and traveled into yours. You now have the X factor. <laughs> he then told Allison to place her left hand over the flame and she did not get burned at all. Upon switching her left hand with her right hand she felt the heat of the candle immediately burn her right hand. Mark then drew the letter Y on her right hand and asked her to place her hand over the flame, and she still felt the heat, but upon turning the Y into an X she did not feel any pain. Spoiler alert! If you accidentally clicked on this video and don't want to know how such tricks work, I will give you 5 seconds to click off this video, but if you consider magic as a puzzle then stay tuned. Now before I get down to the reveal, I want to give a quick shout out to my wonderful patrons for supporting my work. Their support is a reason I am able to improve my content and upload more regularly. We will break this trick into two phases. In the first phase, we will discuss the observations that will help us in figuring out how this trick is done and in the second phase based on those observations, I will explain exactly how Mark performed this incredible magic trick. When Mark initially started off the performance, we immediately notice something odd about his right hand, although it does appear as if his hand is empty, but his odd and unnatural movements of his right hand, makes us suspect, Mark is hiding something either in his palm or closed fingers. If you were to compare the motion of his right hand with his left hand, you will notice a clear and very obvious difference. His right hand is very stagnant and insecure to face its palm towards the audience, and right after he holds onto Allison's hands. He appears to be throwing something behind the table with his right hand and only then, his right hand fingers are moving freely. The second thing you'll notice right after is related to the matchbox and the matchstick. Although this observation might seem unnecessary to point out, but you will understand why I've pointed this out in the explanation, notice that Mark never pulled the matchstick out of the matchbox. Rather it was placed outside on the table right beside the matchbox before he struck it to light the candle. The third observation which you might consider also unnecessary for me to point out is how he carefully placed the matchbox right behind the candle, at the same time, kept a slight opening in the matchbox tray for some odd reason. The moment Mark brings his hand over the candle, it starts to flicker abnormally fast. The same abnormal flickering motion happens when Allison brings her hand near the flame. The final thing I want to bring into your notice is at the moment Mark goes to grab the lid from his mouth, you'll notice him licking his fingertips for some odd reason. Let's see what Penn had to say about Mark's performance. So we think that's a fake flame. And you're right on top of it. So I want to ask you, Allison, is that a real flame? According to Penn, Mark used a fake candle, but upon confirmation, it was a real candle flame. That is a real flame. Absolutely a real Absolutely. flame. Absolutely. Penn then gave a second guess, saying that there must be a mechanical mesh that covered the flame so that it didn't burn Allison's hand when she brought it over the flame. But there's no sort of mechanical mesh that goes over the top. I mean, when you were doing this, could you see something happening that... But that also was an incorrect guess of how he performed this illusion. No, I... No, legitimately. I mean, I'm easy to fool, but legitimately, there, uh, like, I saw nothing. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you have made it this far into the video, be sure to hit the like button. It really supports the channel. Also, be sure to subscribe. I would really appreciate it due to the time and effort I put into my videos. If you want to see more and more uploads, please support me on Patreon for a single dollar per month. I would really appreciate it wholeheartedly. Now let's get back to figuring out how this trick is done. I will now explain exactly how this trick is done. If you had not figured out from the observations already, 
When Mark originally started off the performance, he held on to a stamp with an X marking on it. So when he held on to Allison's hand in the beginning of the performance and crossed her arms, he secretly stamped her left hand, he then went behind the table and dropped the stamp into a savant. He then picked up the match and the matchbox off the table. In the observations I brought in to notice that the match was never in the matchbox rather on the table beside it. This is because the match simply could not fit into the matchbox, as it was not a normal prop in the performances, rather it was gimmicked in a very special and technical way. To help you understand how it is gimmicked I will first explain the basic principle upon which the main candle flame trick in the performance is based on. Let's start off with the basics of what a flame is. A flame is just really hot air, so hot in fact that the air starts to glow and emit light, the closer the flame is to the candle the hotter it is and this is why we see different colors in the flame as air gets hot. The molecules gain more energy and thus start moving around more, and the space between the molecules increases. This makes the hot air lighter and the cold air heavier. After understanding the basic science of what a flame is, we can conclude that in order to manipulate this flame, we will just need to redirect the air around it, since the direction of the heat moving from the candle depends around its surroundings. A popular trick based on this concept of holding a flame or a lighter underneath your hand for an unlimited amount of time uses this principle of manipulating the air around the candle. The reason the candle does not burn the hand, even though the hand is so close is because the performer is blowing air from his mouth and targeting the inside of his hand. By striking air on the inside of the hand, the direction of the hot air from the candle is redirected away from his hand. Therefore, the performer can hold the candle however long he wants underneath his hand without damaging it. This is also the reason why we see a flicker near the tip of the flame. Now, you may be wondering even if this concept appears to be correct, it would be impossible for Mark to blow at such a distance and at such an angle at the candle, that is at a level below his mouth. Well the reason is, he is not blowing at all. This is where the matchbox comes into play. Like I pointed out earlier in the observations, the lid of the match box was slightly open and then the matchstick could not fit inside the box because there was no room for it. The matchbox actually contained a small fan blower, that can be bought from this website. The size of the fan is small enough to fit inside the matchbox, alongside with a lithium battery that was attached with a receiver, controlled with a small transmitter remote attached to the back of the table. If you were to look at where the matchbox is positioned, you will have already figured out that not only is the matchbox at the perfect level but also the matchbox prop appears to be a completely ordinary object when in fact the entire trick is based on it alone. The small opening in the matchbox pushes the air upwards against the spectator's hand, therefore redirecting the hot air of the flame away from the hand. After drawing the X on his hand with the marker, we spot him licking the fingertips of his hand for some odd reason while grabbing the cap. This is because the marker that he is using is not an ordinary marker at all. Rather it is a special marker because of the ink that is used in it. The marker is a popular magic prop known as a sharpie, created by a magic company called Sansmines. Basically the ink of the marker is removable when moisture on your fingertips is rubbed against it. This is the reason why we spotted him lick his fingertips. So, right after he placed a cap on the marker, he immediately vanished the X mark that he drew on his hand, before waving it over the candle. So that when the time came to show he is about to teleport the X mark from his hand to Allison's hand, he did not have to vanish it at that exact moment, rather, had vanished it beforehand with his saliva. If you like what you saw, be sure to hit the like button and feel free to comment which reveal you want to see next. Thanks for watching and as always, have a great day!